Howdy, everyone. Alrighty, so I've decided to move on to something that I had kind of forgotten about until a couple of weeks ago, and I figure that now is a good time to tackle it. Um, if you recall, on the upper cowling, I had fitted these fiberglass inlet ramps, is what I call them, these pieces of fiberglass here. And that's just to help the airflow to come through and effectively do its cooling job. Without these, the air would break and it would be very turbulent and uh, wouldn't flow, if you will, nicely. So the job of these inlets is just to keep that airstream smooth as long as possible and to let as much air as the intake will allow to come in. There's the same theory for the exit. So on the bottom cowling, you've got this lower scoop and all the air that comes in through the inlets will hopefully pass through the fins of the engine or through your different cooling tubes and it will all gather and exit this um, area here. So again, it's kind of the same idea. You want to kind of gather up and smooth out as much of that air as you can before it actually exits the airplane. So it's going to be difficult to see, but you can see here this notch here from the, this is the mounting tab for the lower cowling and it's notched here and it's notched on the other side. That is basically where that lower cowling opening sits. So the lower cowling opening will come down from roughly this notch area down across and then up on the other side. So you want to make a a transition area in here so that the airflow will come down from the top of the engine or through it's going to come down from the from the top of the engine through all of your cylinder fins and it's going to gather and try to exit this lower area here and out from the bottom of the cowling so you want to make a transitional area just like you had done with the top cowling. Here's between the exhausts something in here, some kind of an airfoil shape, a rounded shape contour so that the air can come down and flow around that and out. The instructions don't say anything about that. There is a very tiny picture in the written instructions. There is nothing on the actual plans. Within the written instructions, they do talk about the inlet ramps and this exit ramp as far as smoothing out airflow. There really isn't any picture. There's a little drawing, a cross-section drawing, that shows nothing more than a bump down here. So I've uh, done some research on the internet and looked at some pictures and got an idea for what I would like to do. And what I have started with is, again, just a poster board template. Let me get this aluminum out of the way here. So like I've done in the past, I just start with a, a poster board template and you fit it and cut it and fit it and cut it and modify it just like everything else we've been doing lately and get it to fit and then transfer that template onto your actual usable piece of metal. Here is one that I had tried to do before using a template. I was trying to do this on the plane real time without doing a template first and it's a little too small. And it didn't fit the way that I wanted it to, so I figured I should just stop and do it the right way, which in my mind is to start with a template. This is a pain in the ass because you have to fit it down underneath the fuselage where I was just showing you. There's a lot of hoses and brackets and things like that, and they're going to get scratched if you try to slide this in and out while you're fitting it. 
poster board is really nice for that. It's a lot more flexible. You can work with it a lot easier. But you can get a basic idea here. When you look at the shape of this, it's just a, a contoured piece of aluminum. And you can imagine this is the bottom edge of the fuselage. And this top area here was is ultimately, I'm planning on having it attached to the firewall. So if you can imagine this being in the airplane upright, the air would come down and it would mold, shape itself, flow around this curved area and then out the bottom of the cowling. So like I said, you're limited with what you can do because um, I've got all my other stuff fitted as far as the engine firewall forward area is concerned. So you have to work this, this exit ramp as best you can in and amongst whatever it is you've got down here. So at this point, I'm going to go ahead and start forming that um, aluminum piece, this flat aluminum piece. I'm going to start folding it, not folding it, but uh, curving it and uh, mount bending in my flanges. And then I'm going to have to figure out how to mount it. And I'll get to that a little bit later on when I when I finally do get to that point. But for now, I'm going to try to basically shape this like this and get it to actually fit inside there. <clears throat> and then I'll try to figure out how to mount it. So let me go ahead and uh, I'll get started forming this. <clears throat> and when I get it up in there and decent looking, I'll uh, come back and talk about it. All right. Talk to you guys later. Howdy, everyone. All righty, so I've been working on this lower cowling exit ramp, and it is now complete. I uh, had started with a, um, a poster board template, and I actually had to remake this three times. This is my third attempt. I made a template, cut a piece of aluminum. It didn't work out. Made another template, another piece of aluminum. Didn't work out. Another template this piece of aluminum, this one worked. So this is the finished product. This is actually ready to go in. You can see the overall shape. It's got a very odd shape. You can see the cutouts for the um, engine mount tubes. These are actually a little too large. This, this hole comes down too far. I, this hole could have been a quite a bit shorter of course I didn't know that at the time when I was fitting it but uh, they'll be fine I, I'm assuming you can see that these these corners here are curled this corner here is curled this one is curled out of necessity because it had to clear my control cable that came in here so I just bent it around I bent this one to match, and um, it will also potentially grab some extra air that's coming down. If there's any air coming around in this area, it may grab it and direct it down into the exit. But this is nothing more than trial and error. Like I said, it took me three attempts to get it right. Um, everybody's situation will be different depending on what you have in the way what material you have to work with, if you've got a tail dragger or a nose wheel type of airplane. A lot of factors, a lot of moving parts, so this is just how mine turned out. My plan is to rivet it across the bottom to the bottom of the fuselage, and then this flange here with the little notch in it, that flange is going to get riveted directly to the firewall. I'm just using... Um, squeeze or not squeeze pop rivets for this installation it makes it semi-permanent i wasn't comfortable using screws and nut plates i just didn't want to add that many extra holes uh, so i realized if this ever needs to come out i'm going to have to drill rivets but it's really not awful it's not it's not that many to, to drill out i think i've got six on the bottom and three on top total and real quick before the battery dies 
on this camera. Well, I'll come back to that. I'll come back to that. Let me get this camera charged and I'm going to get this piece pop riveted in place. And then I'll talk to you guys later. Howdy, everyone. All right, so I'm back. And obviously, I've got the uh, the exit, exit ramp is now in place. It might be hard to see because the lighting sucks and everything is very reflective under here. But this is the ramp here. And like I said, I've got it riveted to the bottom of the fuselage. There's a row of rivets. There are two rows of rivets um, very close to one another that run side to side on the fuselage right here by the firewall. I used the forwardmost row and I drilled out every other rivet. And then I went ahead and replaced those with these pop rivets. The top again is just held on with rivets. There's only three. There's one, two, three rivets. Let me get a better angle here. One there, one there, and there's one over here. And that's it. I've got the cutouts here to clear the uh, engine mount, one on each side. There's another one here, cut out. And then, like I said, this particular ear here that's rolled over, it's curled under to clear this cable that runs past it. So that's back in there somewhere. And then I just mimicked the same thing on this side. That one is just curled around. And I'm hoping it will act a little bit like a scoop so the air that comes down and impinges on that will just come right around and out. That's all I'm going to do to it at the moment. Uh, this is aluminum. It is uh, 0 0.025 inches thick. I wanted to use something thinner, but I didn't have any, so I just used what I had on hand. So I'm going to leave it like that and see how it does, right? Just with everything else. Um, just got to keep an eye on a lot of things and... Uh, if things don't work out, then you got to go to plan B. If they survive, then you're good. So I'm going to see if this survives. One thing that I'm thinking about doing is, since I have these big gaps around the engine mounts, I can get my finger in this one. I'm thinking about getting some aluminum tape and just taping around these to close that off. And I may even bridge behind the engine mount where this slit is cut behind here. I may bridge across in the back to completely close this off same on this side i may put tape back here to bridge around this engine mount other than that this is done thankfully this was something that i was not looking forward to because i had been working on the exhaust and you can see i disconnected the exhaust and i've got it swung out of the way would have been a lot easier if the uh if I just disconnected the exhaust here at the collector and just took the whole tailpipe muffler assembly off and out of the way, but it wasn't too bad like it is. So now I have to go back and get my exhaust put back together and hopefully it will still line up nicely with the bottom of the fuselage and the bottom of the cowling. So that will be next to get that put back together. I'm gonna run my tubes for my heat muff here. I got my left and right. Well, that's not true. My inlet and outlet for my heat muff, for my cabin heat, I'll do that next. I just kind of look over the engine compartment a little bit real quick, make sure nothing else needs to be done. And then I'm going to go and tackle the, um, the new wheels, brakes, tires, and uh, fairings that I bought. So that will probably be next, and we'll know for sure next time the next video comes out. All right. That's it for this exit ramp. I will talk to you guys later.